Ladies and gentlemen, my name is In The Game Kaya, and welcome to ITGK Survives Arc Tutorial Series. It's that time of the year again. Actually, we are about uh, uh, all of six months past that time of the year. Um, I am a little delayed <laughs> in getting this up. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I tested everything and got it working first. I wanted to add stuff to my settings. We'll go over some of the things that I added. It's not all done yet. I haven't had a chance to test everything. But I will go over some of the things that I have changed, and we will take a look at that. So, first of all, let's just assume that you are playing single player, you don't know how to or don't want to edit your INI files, maybe you're on console. Look, I got you, alright? So don't worry about it. We'll go ahead and get into that. First of all, mods. If you're going to start on a, cert on a map, by the way, I do recommend the island. Just... Honestly, at this point, anything other than Scorched Earth is probably good. Scorched Earth kind of hard. But I do recommend the island. It's kind of the experience that Ark was based around. Now, uh, for mods recommended. Custom Dino Levels is uh, something that I use all the time. If you can't edit your INI files, don't even bother. Because um, it kind of requires that to really be of much use. QOL Plus, um, if you're playing by yourself, there's a mod called Solo Farm Mod that allows you to harvest things a little bit more easily with dinosaurs. Um, Marty Mods hairstyles I use all the time, but it's just cosmetic. Other than that, it's mostly preference, uh, like Dino Pater. Better breeding, I do use better breeding, I do recommend that. That makes it so that when you breed dinos, the better stats always transfer over to the offspring. Very useful. You don't want to use it, you don't have to. Um, mods are mostly up to you. Um, and if you're ever wondering what mods that I use, all the mods that I use in my series, they're all listed in the description, so just go to a video, check the description, that should tell you what you need. If it's not in the description, leave a comment, let me know, I will send you my mod list, no problem. Alright, let's get into the game rules. First of all, player health recovery is doubled. It just makes it so that you can recover health a little bit more quickly, and let's say you're freezing to death in the cold, you finally get your heat under control and you can start healing, you don't have to stand around quite as long. Uh, for creatures, again, health recovery is two times. This just, because you're going to leave a creature out, it needs to heal, it, it, this is just going to make it go faster, uh, less downtime. And that's what these settings are really about, like these base settings are about eliminating downtime. All right, now harvesting damage, four times. It's slightly higher than normal. I'm trying to get this to a point where high-level dinos can one-shot resource nodes and get the whole node in one swing, but if they're not really high level, then they're not going to. I'm not quite there yet. 10 was just too high, but honestly, it's default 3.2. Anything that or higher, you're just gonna be fine. Like, if you wanna set it to 600, it's not going to drastically change your arc experience. It's not something that, that changes it uh, uh, that big. But I have it set to 4 now. It'll probably go a little bit higher. We will see. Um, structure. This is just disable structure placement collision. If you're playing PvP, turn this off. I I'm usually playing PvE, so I have mine on right now. For the world, uh, XP multipliers 1. We'll get to individual multipliers later. Taming speed is 2, harvest yield is 3. These are, I'm pretty sure, lower than what I had before. And that's because I have appreciated a slightly different aspect of arc that I, I didn't really before. The more you have to work for something, the more you really appreciate the value of it. And that goes especially true for tames. But at the same time, you cannot just sit there for 12 hours and tame a Mosa for 12 hours when you are the only person on the server. And it was not just 12 hours, but even longer than 12 hours if you played uh, OG rates. Um, I'm not sure what it is by default right now. I thought it was a little too slow for one person on by themselves to tame. I have it set to two, two, three. You're probably fine with three. Uh, if you think it's too fast, you could even go back to one. If you're taming mostly with kibble, it's not going to be a problem. I have mine set to two. I, it helps to encourage me to use kibble, think out my taming process, and order properly. 
value the tames that I get and work to protect them and feel bad about losing them, but not at the same time feel like, oh my god, that's, you know, 16 hours that I gotta go and and burn again. No, it's, it's not that. Um, other than taming speed, like a harvest yields just... 3x. It's pretty standard. A whole bunch of people recommend 3x. And not just me. Other guys that I've seen their settings videos, they recommend 3x too. Very well balanced for one or two people. Okay. Let's see what else. Maximum difficulties on. And... Since I play on servers with low population or just by myself, I have allow unlimited respects turned on. All right, to rules, these are mostly personal preference. Um, I have notify turned on, crosshairs turned on, PvP gamma is turned on. PvP is just kind of arc now. Like it's been something that people do for so long. Most people are used to being able to toggle gamma and honestly, you don't even need to most of the time with uh, the way night looks now. Over here, we have uh, Allow tribe war on, tribe war cancel on. So that allows you to, okay, you can form tribe alliances, and then if you're in a PvE server and you're not playing PvP, I do recommend that you set your server to be a PvP server, by the way. Even if you are going to play PvE, because, and we'll get to this in the XP multipliers over here, there are some, some things, and one thing in particular, that you can only do on a PvP server that people will recommend for you to do once you get to the end game, you flat out can't do it on a PVE server. Um, and then Tribe War is basically if you're on a PVE server, you can turn on temporary PVP between just a couple of tribes. So I was like, hey, why not have the option? I've never used it, but it's there. Um, flyer Carry On, again, if you're on a PVE server, um, a lot of people will recommend or give you tutorials on stuff that say, hey, carry this, do this. This is another thing that's exclusive to PvP. You turn this on, you can do it in PvE as well. Um, and the rest of this should just all be vanilla. Let's go to the PvP. This should all be vanilla to world now. Um, day cycle speed is one. I used to have longer days and, and shorter nights and a customized day cycle, I feel like it's different in ASA. Maybe I'm wrong, but it, it just, it feels like the days are so much longer. And I mentioned this in one of my episodes of Day by Day. So I just reverted it back to 1.0 and I have not gone through and recalculated everything and created a new um, set of sliders for this. But especially since nighttime isn't the huge problem it was before, I just kind of leave it all default. Um, it's a bunch of default stuff. Crop growth speed is eight times. So I think it was like eight hours to grow a crop before on server settings. And now this is an hour. Uh, this is really important. Because if you're playing with server settings turned on and... Okay, is there... Ah, here we are. Use single player settings off. I forgot about this earlier. Make sure that you have this turned off. Do not have single player settings. It changes the speeds of things, the stats of things, this, that, and the other. And it creates a, a slightly different arc experience. In my opinion, it's not as well balanced and doesn't have the same high-level challenge. Everything that I'm showing you, even though it's technically multiplayer server settings, everything's very doable as just one guy. It can be done. So uh, don't feel like you have to turn on single-player settings to make sure that you can play by yourself. Not necessary. Crop growth is one of those things that was changed. So with crop growth speed to eight, now it only takes like an hour to two to grow a single crop plot, as long as it's fertilized properly. Uh, mating interval 0.12, that's uh, one eighth. Allows for assuming that you're not going to be keeping the server up the whole time. So you can 
create eggs every so often without it being constantly feeding you eggs because when you allow constant feeding of eggs there are certain things that you can do to kind of cheese the game a little bit so there are times when i will set this to zero and just completely disable the mating interval but i think for most people and most of the time for myself this is more than good enough more than slow enough just leave it at 0.12 there will definitely be downtime between when dinos mate it won't be that bad lay egg interval 0.5 um, so they'll lay eggs twice as often eggs will hatch 10 times faster mature 30 times faster these are all based on uh, slightly modified from the actual single player settings uh, ticker that I showed you before uh, calculations based on that and then Multiplayer settings were modified to be closer to that speed with some numbers tweaked. I don't remember exactly which numbers were tweaked. Because uh, I don't play on single player settings too often. Uh, but it got the numbers close enough. If you feel like it's slow, you know what? Double them. Uh, double the hatch speed, double the mature speed. Have the the cuddle interval, interval from 0 0.12 to 0 0.06 or 0 0.05. Um, as it is, this is around an hour between cuddles. And that allows you to grow endgame creatures in a reasonable amount of time without them feeling like, oh, well, this is just so replaceable. And especially feeling like, you know, you can just hatch a bunch of eggs and have these creatures grow up without being fed. Uh, if you turn it up fast enough, you can grow creatures without having to feed them at all. Some people like that. I prefer to, you know, have to be putting in the work in order to do that. That's up to you. If you think these uh, maturation or hatch speeds are too slow, double this number to 20, double this number to 60, and change this number to 0 0.06. And that should be more than good enough for you if you feel like that's too slow. To the wild dinos, everything is default. Tame dino, everything is default. Player. Everything is default, unless you decide that you want to turn on speed. I don't have speed turned on, but if you do turn on speed, this is what I recommend. And for Tame Dino, the same. Find this stat here, add per level, go to speed, and change this to 0 0.25, right there. Um, the game has a tendency to lag or glitch when you go too fast. And the game is also balanced around people and creatures not leveling up their movement speed. Everything has been tweaked up or down slightly to give it that perfect butter zone of everything has the same movement speed. Everything has 100% movement speed. You start tweaking with that, allowing level ups, it changes the way the game is played. And it can make the game very buggy. It can make the game very, very exploitable. And... So I just say, hey, if you want the speed levels turned on, just set it to 0 0.25 and it won't be as overpowered as it was back in ASE. Now to XP multipliers. Remember I said that we were going to talk about something. Most of these are vanilla. There are a couple that are changed. First of all, harvest is 2x. Dinos that were just harvesters, it felt like they were leveling too slow. And if you weren't actively going out and killing things, I felt like you weren't leveling quite as fast as I would like, so I just went ahead and doubled it. That makes it feel a little bit better without it being overpowered. Explore note, 0 0.5. I think that might actually be the default on hard difficulty, but regardless, um, Explore notes did give you too much XP at 1.0. I tried 0 0.25, I thought it wasn't quite enough. 0 0.5 seems to be alright, that'll probably get tweaked again, but for now 0 0.5 is more than good enough. Uh, it's pretty close to where I want it. And the last two down here, these are important. When you get to the end game, there are some things that you are going to do to grind up levels for yourself and for your creatures, your boss armies. That means hatching a bunch of eggs and killing the children that spawn out of those eggs, the baby dinos. If you do not have a PvP server, you can't do that, and that's the best way to level your boss army as far as I am aware. And one of the best ways, if not the best way, to level yourself as well. So, tamed creature kill and unclaimed creature kill, by keeping those at two, that allows you 
to go ahead and do that to grind those levels just like people said and it cuts a, a little bit of that downtime so that you can um, get to you know creatures pretty much fully leveled a lot faster for miscellaneous um, allow raid dino feeding is on if you're playing PvP turn it off PvE personal preference I like it on um, Photo mode range limit, this is by default 3000. If you're in PvP, you might want to disable photo mode, otherwise I don't see why you wouldn't just turn this up, let people go crazy. It's kind of fun to fly around. Um, custom recipes are on, effectiveness is one, and then I have this as well. Recipe skill factor and crafting skill bonus are 0 0.5. Uh, end game crafted loot off of blueprints can be very, very powerful. Like, almost you know, game-breakingly powerful. But the, the, you may have noticed a theme with the, the way I have my settings set up. This is all designed to trim that back a little bit. Take the things that are too powerful and reel them in so they're not quite as broken, and then take the things that are taking a little bit of time or that need a little bit of help and raise them up a little bit. It's kind of create a little bit more balance and freeform arc experience that still feels fun and engaging, still has that end game push, and nearly endless amounts of things to do, even once you beat bosses, do all of that. Um, so that means that crate loot quality is one, fishing loot quality is one. Yeah, I have been working on, <clears throat> excuse me, a loot crate overhaul. It's just not done. I'm at the point where I need to test it extensively at the end game, where I'm running caves constantly, I have all kinds of powerful creatures, I can test the damage output of my weapons against things like bosses, or my, the strength of my saddles against things like bosses, how strong do I want the loot, what kind of things do I want to get from loot, and how often should I change this slider at all? I haven't worked on that yet. I did feel like crafting skill was too good, I turned it down. But, the actual loot itself is still 1.0 quality, so you're still gonna get really good loot from drops. Uh, and then, floating damage text is personal preference, and then I have all of the engrams turned on. So now, let's go ahead and head over to the INI file that I've created. And that will be linked in the description. There are a couple of other features if you have access to INI editing that I want to show you, and I will show you uh, how you can copy those over. Okay, so welcome to Pastebin. The link to this Pastebin is in the description down below. Uh, as the intro to this video already lets you know, you can go ahead and find it there. Let's go ahead and break down some of the extra features that I've added to the settings this year that you can add to if you are running a server and have access to the INI files, even on console, or you are playing on PC and can edit your INI files even for single player. Uh, or of course, if you're hosting your own server on your own PC. First of all, the game.ini and game user settings.ini, which is further down this list, are posted in here raw. So you take this heading and everything below it all the way down to here and you copy all of this this is your game.ini settings, you just copy this and then you take it into your game.ini file, which I, in another tutorial, have shown you uh, where to find it. That's in the INI editing tutorial. So uh, you open that game.ini file and you just replace everything in there with this block of text right here and you've got all my settings. Game user settings is a little bit more specific. We will get to that, but first here are some other things that you can put in your game.ini file that are optional features. You just add them or remove them as you see fit. Um, apart from this first one, I have all of them in. So, as you know, the Pyro main has been a note of contention in the art community. It's extremely powerful, it's not balanced, at least not yet. Uh, it is very much something that feels like it's pay to win and may not be fair, especially if you're playing PvP. So how do we remove the Pyromane or nerf it, you know, get it more balanced? 
Well, first of all, you can remove it simply by in game.ini under the main header, you paste this right here. All three of these lines, you just copy these and you would paste them right here. So it'll be in between these two lines. That will prevent the fire lion or the pyromane from spawning prevent you from taming it, prevent it from being transferred in or out. So it wouldn't spawn in, can't be tamed if someone gets one in, and uh, cannot be transferred in or out. Anyway, so that should remove it. If you don't want to completely remove it, I have nerfed it. I assume it will get balanced at some point but it feels like it just does too much damage. It's got a healing move, so it, it takes too much damage. It does not feel balanced at all. I do agree with that. And so this is probably what I will be using, at least for the time being, is these right here. Yeah, this might be extreme, but I haven't had a chance to thoroughly test it. It'll still be usable. It'll still be usable. It does burn damage, which is a passive damage damage over time so even with this on it will still end it's a creature that you can wear on your shoulder and have it flip off of your shoulder and immediately go to riding it like that alone is worth taming the creature if nothing else but this will bring the damage and its health a little bit more in line with the other creatures possibly even making it weaker than other creatures but for the sake of the utility and the maneuverability of the creature, I think that's more than fair. You can do this with other creatures too, by the way, if you think that there are creatures that are broken. You can go ahead and modify these. Uh, damage, less than one is less damage. And resistance, more than one, is takes more damage. So keep that in mind. So basically by nerfing it, you take its resistance and turn it to two. That sounds like I'm buffing it, but this I'm like 98% sure is the nerf value not 0 0.5 but 2 all right now I also threw in an optional kibble system I have a graphic I'll put that on screen right now uh, of what exactly that is basically it's a, a slight tweaking to the way things work it requires specific eggs that must be non-fertilized and each tier of kibble requires kibble from the tier before so you can't just wait until the end game and then spam out gold or cyan kibble and be like, okay, everything's done. Not everybody's gonna want that, I get that. This is purely optional. That's why this is not in the options by default. It is an option. I think it's cool. Even I won't use this all the time, but I put in that time because it's something I've done before. I got some decent results out of it. Some people were pretty interested. So it's here if you want it. You just copy this code, just like the Pyromain code. You just put it right at the top of your game. .io. It does not matter uh, what part of this it's in necessarily. Just make sure you're not pasting it in the middle of another code. All right. Uh, here are some additional dino spawns that I've added to the island. <clears throat> so, for example, I added Dodicarus to Herbivore Island because they don't spawn there normally. And it's a pretty low chance. You usually only see maybe one. You might not even see one. But uh, it's, a, it's a chance for you to find Dodics there and tame them in a slightly less stressful environment. <clears throat> <coughs> um, and then assuming that you're not using things like custom dino levels or something else, you might want to increase spawns of certain creatures. So I've increased uh, high level thera high level Therizino spawns here. That will be in uh, jungle biomes. High level raptor spawns in the grasslands. Uh, add an aloe to Carnivore Island and increase high level Rex spawns on Carnivore Island. So you can do that there. Um, these are both part of the same code, so you can't have just the aloe or just the high-level rex spawns. They're both together. Uh, high-level megatherium spawns in the redwoods. 
So if you want to tame your high-level Megatheriums for the Broodmother, you know where to go get them. I level Yudi and Deodon spawns in the snow, and additional Kairuku spawns in the snow. Now the Kairuku, maybe it's just single player. Actually, I've been told it's just single player. They don't spawn nearly as much as they should. And it creates a, a problem with the way that some people expect to play the game, myself included. So I tried at first trying to fix the spawn, but I can't do that under INI codes. Simple Spawners isn't in ASA yet at the time of this video. So instead, I added random Kairuku spawns into the snow in small groups so you can still grind out your OP. You just have to do it through the rest of the snow biome instead of on the icebergs, which has worked out just fine for me. Now here's your game user settings at INI. So there are two different chunks of the game user settings. Here's your server settings. Again, copy this heading all the way down to here. Copy all of this. And then this will, you just paste it over the server settings section of your game user settings.ini. Just go ahead and paste that. You'll have my settings, no problem. Uh, beats having to punch it in by hand in your uh, menu and now there's a couple of extra things for mods that you might want to use these are mods that i use and the settings that i use custom level distribution this is the custom dino levels mod i have it set by default to have dino spawn up to level 160. But that's just to cut down on some of the end game breeding that has to be done it doesn't do much of that but I don't want to go crazy because I don't want people having crazy high-level dinos. I just want to cut that down a little bit to make it a little bit more reasonable. Um, again, once equal levels is false, if you turn this to true, you'll get plenty of high-level dinos. It will make things like caves harder. Keep that in mind. Because by default, on most maps, those creatures are scaled to be fairly weak. If you turn that to true, it removes that scaling. And now creatures don't feel so weak anymore in caves. You know, you're not dealing with 20 level 5 to 15 Uranio. You're dealing with 20 different Uranio ranging across the whole scale of levels. Uh, which means that the average level will end higher. It does add more challenge, I'll admit that. But uh, that's not the way some of those, especially early game caves, were designed. For solo farm mod, uh, when I tried it, these settings didn't actually work. That's probably a bug in the event that it gets fixed. These technically, according to the mod creator, are the settings that you should use. And if nothing else, there's an admin menu. You can set these by hand in the game. And in case you're wondering, these, this is what I have mine set to right there. And then configurable wild babies. There's a list here that is too long for me to read off. It's just kind of mid and end game tames. Don't spawn babies anymore. I had removed them, but some people mentioned that, hey, you know, wild babies are kind of a mechanic in ASA. You probably don't need to remove that. And thankfully, I was able to find a mod that did balance things. So I didn't have to worry about people like getting a Rex baby, which I've seen. Um. This is probably not perfect, but it it's only single babies, no twins, no triplets, no water dinos, no flyer dinos, and it's only a 5% chance of a single baby, which is still a 1 in 20 chance. That's not as bad as it seems. <coughs> You'll still see them on a fairly regular basis. Um, just kind of tweak these two numbers here, this 95 and this 5. Tweak those to your heart's content until you get numbers that you feel comfortable with. And if you see something in here that you think, oh, well, I should allow babies of that, um, then I'll leave that to you as well. To go through that list and take a look. But yeah, so that's my settings. I uh, hope you appreciated them. If they do you well, hey, I'd love to hear it. If you have any hit, uh, hints, tips, anything like that, please let me know.
I'm always looking to make these better, not just for myself. I run servers. People that I play on, if I can make my settings better, it'll make them happier too. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if I helped you out. Subscribe and ring the bell for updates on further tutorials and to be notified if I ever post one of my gameplay videos. I put a lot of work into those. Hopefully you enjoy those too. And don't forget to leave a comment as well. And I will see you in the next video.